As far as the women are concerned, again, which is very, very surprising, illiterate women, their employment opportunities have gone up significantly in the urban areas. Basically, 55% of them are absorbed as domestic help, and they're reported, by the way, by official statistical agencies as regular workers. We did a quick calculation at the National Statistical Commission. We are really surprised that regular wages for the, you know, the wages, real wages for regular workers have declined in the past five years when India has recorded about 9% growth rate in real terms. I would like to talk about a process of peripheralization. I think there is a process of selective degenerated peripheralization around many of the metropolitan cities. Alain Bertrand talked about, you know, he shared his concern that mo many of the Indian cities, the land value gradients don't follow the smooth, you know, distance decay function from the core to the periphery. In a way, such concerns are likely to be, become less and less important in future years because the micro-level studies for eight cities that we have compiled for an urban poverty report does show that there has been a process of quote-unquote sanitization of the large cities, the slums, and the informal activities, low-valued informal activities located in the heart of the city. And basically, the land value gradients were not following smooth gradients because of the state intervention, because of the imperfection of legislation and administrative interventions. Now, this, to some extent, has been remedied. And also, a study for NCAER, village-level data, shows something very interesting, which is published in Economic and Political Weekly. I did the analysis before five or six years, which shows that around the large cities, there is a degenerated periphery within the distance of let's say 10 to 15 kilometers from the boundary of the city, which has high infant mortality rate, high maternal mortality rate, low literacy, low per capita income, low per capita consumption expenditure, and low level of literacy. Uh, also, I would like to mention another study, which is uh, done with DFID support. Uh, Jeff Payne in London, he was really organizing this 11 country study, and I did the chapter for uh, Delhi and Ahmedabad, the Indian city. And what we noted is very, very interesting. Uh, that uh, yeah, the, we noted that partial you know, activation of the land market through reform in the land tenure system and strengthening of the legislation really results in breaking down of the informal agreements which the slum dwellers have entered into with the, you know, with the local slum leaders or counts, municipal councillors or the officials, and they get pushed out. And there is a process of, uh, you know, selective degenerated peripheralization, which has some negative significance, which has to be taken care of when you are talking about shining India. And indeed, the macro scenario in many of the large cities does give us this kind of a confidence of signing India. But the problem, the two problems I would like to conclude by referring to them is that, you know, uh, linking of the cities with the global economy has certainly on an average improved the strength of the uh, economy of the metropolitan cities and class one cities and also has improved the quality of infrastructure and basic services. But the inequality has gone up, and the inequality within the city is basically linked with water supply and sanitation services. I think it is quite likely, given the perspective, that the local bodies would provide differential level of services to different wards, depending on the effort, affordability of the locality and the connection with the media. Resident welfare associations have become very, very powerful in most of the metropolitan cities who are getting also support from civil society organizations, have been in a position to make an impact on efficiency. That is absolutely no doubt. But at the same time, this politically powerful group of resident welfare associations have been able to take a disproportionate share of the total basic amenities and administrative attention. And that is also resulting in inequality and subcontracting of services to some of the private 
agencies would link it up, link up the quality of the service with the affordability of the localities, which would also increase inequality. And by the way, 74th Constitutional Amendment also talks about the, you know, giving powers of organizing the basic amenities and the quality and the prices to be determined at the ward level. And if that happens, I would think that will be institutionalization of inequality in many of the cities. I would just talk about two major problems that we have to really take care of when you are moving towards fast globalization and linking our cities to the global economy, which is absolutely essential for overall economic growth. One is this threat of health, hygiene, and also epidemics. Uh, I think uh, the average health situation in a city does not depend on average expenditure on health. It depends on the expenditure that you make on water supply and sanitation facilities, and that too, not in the you know, average expenditure, but the marginal expenditure that you make in the marginal colonies. And I would think that the inequality in the urban system would really increase the threat of this health and hygiene and epidemics in many of the large cities in future years. And the rich localities would be looking for private and personalized solutions to the, uh, the, the you know, problems of public health. The final point is about, uh, is about the, uh, the law and order situation uh, in the larger cities, which would get linked up. And we have already heard about some of this problem in the earlier presentation. I was looking at, I reviewed a book by Gappard, American Cities in 21st Century, out of 14 papers, I think nine papers talked about law and order problem. Similar things are coming up, and I would think, I think within the next one and a half decade, this might become really a major issue unless we do something about this problem. And uh, I looked at uh, the data of the 84 riot situation in Delhi. And you can clearly map the areas of violence, individual and group violence, and map the areas of deficiencies. These two are going strongly together. Three of my doctoral students have really, at the ward level data for five or six cities, linked up level of basic amenities and level of you know, individual and group violence, very strongly uh, giving correlations, which certainly is an area of, area of concern. I would think that for having sustainable development, we'll have to do something about this exclusionary urban growth process. We must have uh, promote number of small and medium towns. I think this is the perspective that the German chancellor yesterday also talked about, uh, you know, allowing large number of small and medium towns to absorb the migrants from the rural areas. So that, uh, so that you know, they do not move towards the larger cities. And also, we'll have to stall the process of degenerated peripheralization and segmentation of the cities by basically taking the overall responsibility of providing the minimum level of services to all sections of the population by the public agencies, while involving the private agencies and the community for efficiency and accountability will be must but the responsibility of ensuring the minimum level of amenities would have to be taken by public agencies. I think without this kind of an agenda, the objective of sustainable de urban development would be a pipe dream. Thank you.